The 5060 Ti is three fifths the speed, power consumption and roughly price of the 5070 Ti. And here are the benchmarks. Now I deliberately chose settings here, which would be GPU limited. So before you go, <laughs> it can't run these games, clearly it can, just drop the settings a bit. Anyway, I've tried to keep this video simple, but it always becomes a large sprawling mess of asterisks and disclaimers. So in a bid to try and keep it simple, back when I reviewed the 5070 Ti, I concluded that it was a 4K card with a compromise here and there. And the 5060 Ti, is kind of like that, but for 1440p. Non-ray traced games can be run just fine. Ray traced ones can be used with DLSS to get good frame rates. And even full blown path tracing is still a possibility and at high FPS, provided you don't mind using frame gen. And 16 gigabytes ensures that this card has enough oomph to power these effects. So we know how it runs stuff and God damn it. So anyway, that's how the card is, but how good is it? Graphics cards these days are really complicated things to try and analyse. The benchmarks are easy, but explaining what that means to you as a buyer and user of those cards seems to get more difficult every generation. In a vacuum where only the 5000 series of RTX cards exists, the 5070 Ti was the best value for money, being the sweet spot for price to performance and being the cheapest card with 16GB of VRAM, which is a nice amount to have these days. But with the 5060 Ti, a cheaper 16GB alternative now exists. This is important because even though it's not as fast, like I said, three fifths of the speed, it should at least be rather consistently three fifths of the speed, as opposed to the 8GB version of the card, which might drop off a cliff from time to time, depending on the settings used. So that makes the 5060 Ti the most affordable budget card from the lineup, and it should see you through for many years to come. But that's in a vacuum, where only the RTX 5000 series exists. But AMD's Radeon 9070 cards also exist, and also sport 16GB of VRAM. And supposedly for just $120 more than the 5060 Ti costs. So they'll likely be more appealing cards to aim for, just because they have so much more raw horsepower than this card has. But that's assuming MSRPs mean anything. Right now the 9070 cards only seem to be available for about £50 more than MSRP here in England, and I don't even know what the 5060 Ti's price will settle at. As you can see, explaining graphics cards seems to get more difficult with every generation. And then on the horizon is AMD's Radeon 9060 series, which promises to shake stuff up again. <sighs> and then there's the cheaper 8GB variant of the 5060 Ti, with an MSRP of $380. $50 less for the same performance might look quite tempting to some buyers, but it's a bit of a false economy these days. Nvidia have shipped the 16GB variant to reviewers, and there's probably a reason behind that. And oh, why is this mouse not working? Oh, it's... I just have to do this. But a lot of buyers will just see the 5060 Ti name and will buy the cheapest version, which will likely be the 8GB one. Don't do this. The 16GB model should retain its value better as well, should you want to sell it later. For the record, Half-Life 2 RTX used a lot more than 8GB of VRAM in my testing. I don't know how it will run on the 8GB version of this card, I assume not very well. And when testing this card, occasionally I'd flick on path tracing or another super demanding feature, and the computer wouldn't grind to a halt and crash, which is likely what would happen if you did that on the 8GB version of the card. The 5060 Ti is not a blisteringly fast card but having 16GB of VRAM ensures that it's reliable even under demanding conditions where it can't really run the game that well, but at least it can still run it. And it lets you squeeze more out of its power by using VRAM intensive tricks like frame gen. Oh, frame gen. It's been the feature that Nvidia have really pushed for the last two generations. While for me, it's made me search my soul for why we wanted higher FPS in the first place. Was it for extra visual smoothness or was it for a more responsive feeling experience? I mean, obviously both is nice to have, but I looked back at the time when we were happily playing games at 30 to 40 FPS, and it wasn't until competitive online titles came along that having higher FPS actually meant more, because it allowed us to aim better and to get the advantage over all the other people on the server. So with frame gen improving the visual smoothness, but actually detracting from the responsiveness, I think it kind of misses the point of why we wanted higher FPS in the first place. Meanwhile, DLSS upscaling is something I firmly believe in. It's a huge net positive, and I look very suspiciously at people 
who oppose it, because in my eyes it's a no-brainer to use, even if you do have the horsepower to run the game natively. And with Transformer models improving the look of it even further, and with AMD finally getting their own decent upscaler for haters to use, I'm seeing people online gradually coming around to the idea that upscaling in games is a good thing. I tried to get an assortment of benchmarks that test all kinds of circumstances, and I tested Alan Wake 2 at quality mode with the older CNN model, and at performance mode with the newer Transformer model, because visually these two look quite similar. Yet the newer Transformer model unlocked an extra 25% more performance on the 5060Ti, for free. And that's on top of an already decent performance boost thanks to DLSS upscaling in the first place. So yeah, I'm a total believer in DLSS upscaling, and Transformer models only improve it further. My benchmarking results were disappointingly consistent for the most part, which is good because it shows me I did it right. But if I had to point out anything from these benchmarks, it's that this card fell further behind the 70 Ti in easier to run games at high resolutions like Counter-Strike 2, Deus Ex Mankind Divided and Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. I think it goes without saying that a 60 tier of card isn't intended to be run at 4K resolutions, and you could easily just drop a few settings and get a much higher frame rate. But the gap between it and the more powerful cards definitely widens as the resolution goes up. So there's another reason for why you should opt for a more expensive card if you're going for higher resolution gaming. And I got mixed results from frame gen as well. In Talos Principle 2 and Indiana Jones, it came with an unacceptable amount of extra latency. Yet in Half-Life 2 RTX and in Hogwarts Legacy, it still felt completely playable and acceptable, even when the base frame rate was likely dropping below 30 FPS. So it very much depends on a per game, per engine basis on whether or not the feature is worth using. But I will say, with Hogwarts Legacy, visual artifacts were beginning to get very distracting, mainly around thin details like trees and candles, and behind transparent HUD elements. So while it may sound obvious, don't play this game maxed out at 4K on a 5060Ti although the reflections did look gorgeous. But yeah, frame gen still has some way to go before it reaches the prestige that DLSS upscaling has, in my opinion. Namely, we've got to wait and see how Reflex 2 pans out, which updates the frame for latest mouse movements just before it's sent to the monitor. Theoretically, it could work with frame gen, and would be the best of all worlds. The game would wait for the next frame to be made, and then it would display the older generated frames, but updated for your latest mouse movements. So even though the frames are delayed, your mouse inputs won't be. So it's pretty much time travel, and that's complicated to understand. And I imagine the biggest issue with it would be how it's adding visual artifacts on top of visual artifacts. And I still can't get my head around latest mouse movements on stuff that's three to four frames behind the latest. But if they can pull it off, I'll be singing Frame Generation's benefits from the rooftops, because it's exactly what I want. Like I said, higher frame rates are for more responsive experiences, and that would actually allow it, even with frame gen. Especially with frame gen. I think the biggest problem with graphics cards is that we look back at a time when $430 would have bought us the second or third fastest card in existence, whereas now it might get you the 5060Ti, availability permitting, which is but a mere fraction of the speed of the fastest cards available. But when you stop to see what you do get from it, it is actually rather capable. If we forget the politics and the value you used to get from cards and so on, if you were given this card and a 1440p monitor and the rest of a PC as well, and were told just to go and enjoy gaming, I think your experience with this card would be very good. Given that very few people are on systems more demanding than 1440p resolution, dare I say the 5060 Ti is all you really need. Price to performance scales linearly this generation. 5070Ti costs 70% more for almost 70% more performance, so that's clearly the better investment if you want to hold onto a card for as long as possible. But it's an awful lot to be spending on a graphics card, isn't it? What are our expectations like for a 60 tier of card? The RTX 2000 and 3000 series premium 60 tier card was nipping at the heels of the 70 tier card above it. This isn't the case here because the 5060Ti has quite a gap between it and the more powerful RTX 5070. Now I don't have one on hand to compare it against, but assuming the 5070 is a 4070 Super for performance, it would put it almost halfway between the 5060Ti and the 5070Ti. But then you give up 4GB of VRAM with that card as well, so it compromises all the way up. But against older series like the GeForce 1060, when it came out they were seen as being premium 1080p cards, which remained quite capable even at 1440p. I'd argue that the 5060Ti is better than that. Like I said, it's very capable at 1440p, with minimal compromises, and with upscaling it can even do quite a bit at 4K. Provided you stick to just high settings, you'll likely be approaching 100fps in most titles, far more capable than the 60 tier cards from 2016 were at release. But then maybe the expectation has risen for what sort of resolution and frame rates this tier of cards should be able to hit. 
See, it's complicated, especially with stuff like path tracing. Just because it exists, should we expect all cards to be able to handle it at high frame rates and resolutions and without frame gen? Because that's what a 5060 Ti card will be judged on. I did try Half-Life 2 RTX. I didn't benchmark it, I just loaded it up to see which sort of resolution and DLSS settings it performed optimally at. At first, I was struggling to get it running well on the 5060 Ti, but then I realised I was running it at 4K. But the fact it didn't immediately crash and burn is testament to the 16GB of VRAM this card has. At 1440p though, the 5060 Ti was running it nicely at DLSS performance mode, which thanks to the new Transformer models, still looks very nice. And it did use frame gen. On a 360Hz monitor, I thought whacking it up to the maximum four times frame gen was the obvious thing to do, and yet it definitely felt less responsive than sticking to three times did. Is it just because the 5060 Ti isn't powerful enough to be able to generate three fake frames between every real one? I don't know, but I did manage to get a perfectly enjoyable 1440p fully path traced experience from this card in Half-Life 2 RTX thanks to DLSS upscaling and frame gen. No matter what your thoughts are on the value of path tracing, if you get this card then you know you won't be missing out on it. But the 5070 Ti is clearly a fair bit faster, since by the looks of it I was also running Half-Life 2 RTX at 4K on that card and didn't seem to notice at all. But boy, did it look crisp on my 1440p screen. Power consumption wise, the 5060 Ti is rated at 180 watts, yet only drew somewhere between 140 and 160 in practice. This is compared to the 5070 Ti's 230 to 250 ish, so neither is especially more efficient than the other. They're both great, both consume less power than their rated TDP suggests. But one win with the 5060 Ti is that it uses a single 8 pin connector, rather than the disliked new connector that the 5070 Ti has. So it's nice to see power consumption remaining very acceptable in a world where the most powerful cards and components consume quite ridiculous amounts of power these days. So people who already have a dedicated graphics card but want to upgrade should easily be able to slot in a 5060 Ti without worrying about their PSU going boom. This card also supports the new DisplayPort 2.1 standard, which I don't care about because I still find 1.4 with DSC to be fine under conditions well beyond what this card will be used at. But some people do care, and for you this is another future proofing that comes with buying a current generation of graphics card over, say, a second-hand RTX 3000 or Radeon 6000 series. In conclusion, the 5060 Ti isn't what you want, but it is everything most people will need from a graphics card. Whereas I consider the 5070 Ti to be a solid 4K card, provided you don't mind making minor compromises, the 5060 Ti is very much a 1440p capable card, with the same minor compromises like having to use DLSS upscaling if you want to use path tracing. It comes with all the latest software bells and whistles and enough VRAM to power them, but only if you buy the 16GB variant. But comparison is the thief of joy. You have to remember that you could have got the slightly slower 4060 Ti two years earlier for $70 more. And back then, even that card was overshadowed by AMD's faster 6700 and 7700 cards. And these days, the 5060 Ti will be compared against the even more capable Radeon 9070 series. Granted, they're not quite the same price or performance tier, but with the 9070 series offering a lot of the best bits of the 5070 Ti for closer to the price of the standard 5070, it is potentially a very appealing upsell from the 5060 series. And who knows where the 9060 series is going to land, price to performance wise. Of course, you have to account for pricing and availability of these products, but if you've got your heart set on 16GB, it's hard to view the 5060 Ti in a vacuum. And if you haven't got your heart set on 16GB, come on. Your heart is worth more than 8GB in 2025. In fact, now I think about it, 16GB is perfect for a card of this calibre, but for 4K gaming, maybe you'll want even more.